Imagine that you are building a service that various websites can use to create rules for their password policy. Some companies may require at least 10 characters in the password, some may block hyphens in passwords, and others may require the password to contain at least two special characters. You want to design your service so that your clients can create their own rules, easily change them, add new ones and change the order of the rules. Like I said, it's a chain, chain of responsibility. The chain of responsibility is a behavioral design pattern that allows you to create a chain of objects, where each object can either handle a request or pass it along to the next object. It decouples the sender of a request from its receiver, enabling multiple objects to handle the request without explicitly specifying which object will process it. In our case, we are using a slightly modified version of the chain of responsibility. We have the chain in which a password must pass each object's validation to become a valid password. Therefore, each object must process the password and pass it along the chain if the processing is successful. Let's create an interface and call it rule. It has a single function named validate. Then let's create some real rules like minimum length rule, maximum length rule, special character prohibiting rule, and so on. Each rule contains a reference to the following rule, which we provide in the constructor. So each one of them can continue the chain of calls if its own rule succeeds or breaks the chain if not. Clients can create chains, mix them up, create rules by parameterizing existing rules and get any password patterns they want. That's it. This design pattern has two actors, handler and concrete handler. The first is an interface that defines a common interface for handling requests. It contains a reference to the next handler in the chain. Concrete handler is a subclass of handler that implements special request processing logic. A classic design pattern can either process the request or pass it on to the next handler in the chain. In our variation, it should do both, process the request and pass it to the next handler. One of the most significant advantages is decoupling, as it separates the sender and receiver. This separation allows for modifications or the addition of handlers without any need to alter the client code. In terms of flexibility, the design pattern shines, providing a dynamic and adaptable method for processing requests. Handlers can be effortlessly added, removed or rearranged, facilitating easy modifications to suit changing requirements. Furthermore, each handler in the chain of responsibility focuses on a specific task, adhering to the single responsibility principle and resulting in better organized and more maintainable code. On the flip side, the design pattern has its disadvantages. One issue that may arise is order dependency. The sequence of handlers in the chain plays a crucial role and any misplacement might lead to bugs or unexpected outcomes. Another potential drawback is the risk of requests going unprocessed. If a request traverses the entire chain without being addressed, it remains pending, which could pose problems depending on the application's context. Additionally, since every request has to pass through all the handlers, it could introduce a performance overhead, especially if the chain is lengthy. That's all about the chain of responsibility design pattern. See you in the next video.